Over the last couple of weeks, we have taken a look at things that I personally pray for while I am on my journey, while I am on my walk of faith towards the heavenly kingdom. Mm-hmm. Right. See, I always pray for the Lord to guide me. I pray for God to give me direction on this journey because I desire for my end destination to be his heavenly kingdom. Come on, come on. I also pray for the Lord to keep me. All right. I pray for God to shield and to protect me. Mm-hmm. I pray for him to let no hurt, harm or danger come upon me as I go along the way, because again, I want to make it to heaven. I want to make it to his heavenly kingdom. Now, while we are on this difficult journey, I imagine that we all have experienced days that can be so hard on us that can be too much for us to bear. There are so many things that you and I can go through that can be so difficult on us, Mm -hmm. that can be so taxing and can be so stressful on us that we may even begin to lose hope as we go along the way. So in order for me to never lose hope, I pray for God to supply my every need. I do this because again, I desire to make it to heaven. I desire not to ever lose hope while I am on this journey because I believe that it is hope that will carry me to the heavenly kingdom that I so desire to be in at the end of my journey. You see, uh, a believer that becomes hopeless Mm -hmm. is a believer that I tell you is in serious trouble. A believer that I tell you today is in need of some serious and great help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As you have heard me say before, there are many people who live with the impression that just because one is a child of God, life's journey is going to be easy. (laughs) Let me tell you something. Scripture makes it very clear that such an impression is a misleading impression. Mm -hmm. When I think about the difficulties of the journey for the believer, I first think of a couple of things that Jesus once spoke of to those that desire to follow him that I want to briefly mention to you here for a moment today. Mm -hmm. On one occasion, the mother of James and John made a request to Jesus. She requested to Jesus that her sons be allowed to sit at his hands, one on the left and the other on the right. right. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus' response to this request was very interesting. Jesus, he responded to her, you do not know what you ask. Mm -hmm. He then, I imagine, looked at James and he looked at John And he asked the two, are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? Mm -hmm. Come on. Are you able to drink that cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Mm -hmm. Are you able to do it? Jesus wanted to know. Now, as we know, James and John, they were actually already closely following Jesus Mm -hmm. at that point in time. But when Jesus made this statement, Mm -hmm. it was near the end of his physical presence in our world. Mm -hmm. You see, the two disciples, they were about to follow Christ in the same manner in which you and I follow Christ today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were about to follow him without him physically being present in our world. So the cup that Jesus spoke of was not a cup that was filled with something to drink that would be good to the taste. No, the cup of Jesus was filled with a very bitter drink. Mm -hmm. You see, if you desire to drink from his cup, you have to be ready to go through what he went through Mm -hmm. while he was in the world. You see, Jesus, he went on to say to them, the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve Mm -hmm. 
and to give his life a ransom for many is what Jesus said. You see, while Jesus was loved by many, he was also hated by so many more who were in the world at that time. Jesus, as we know, he ended up suffering Mm -hmm. because he shared a world that stood in opposition of the world and its doctrine. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he shared a word that was of love, Mm -hmm. a word of forgiveness, a word of mercy, a word of salvation. Mm -hmm. This was a word that pointed out mankind's wickedness. Mm -hmm. It pointed out mankind's sin. And you see, nobody wants to be called a sinner. (laughs) Nobody wants to be told that they are wicked. And such news to the people was news that they could not stand, they did not like, and they hated the messenger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The world will hate you today. That is what Jesus said. Jesus said the world will hate you. He literally said that. Those who drink from the cup of Christ should be prepared to be frowned at. We should be prepared to be mocked Mm -hmm. and hated today because we speak a word that moves against them. A word that points out their wickedness, Mm -hmm. a word that points out their sin. This journey for the believer at times can be one that feels lonely. Mm -hmm. One where we may even suffer in our soul. You see, there was another who came to Jesus at one point in time Mm -hmm. and said to Jesus, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus, I imagine that he smiled and that he looked at this man and that he glanced him over. Mm-hmm. And then he said to him very plainly, foxes have holes. All right. He said to him, birds of the air, they have nests. Mm-hmm. But the son of man has nowhere to lay his head is what Jesus said to this man. Yeah. By this statement, I want you to understand that Jesus was making it very plain and clear to this one that desired to follow him. Jesus was letting this one know that following him is not going to be some kind of picnic. Following him was not going to be some kind of joy ride. It was going to be difficult. You see, I want you to understand today that that Jesus never tried to hide this fact from anybody. He never tried to hide this fact from anyone who desired to follow him. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I want you to understand, was not telling anyone that they could not follow him. Jesus wanted people to understand that if they chose to follow him, the journey would be one that would be difficult. Jesus, he again said to another one, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back Mm -hmm. is fit for the kingdom of God. Understand this. Mm -hmm. There are going to be trials. There are going to be tribulations. Mm -hmm. There are even going to be adversaries that will make things so hard on you that the journey again can become exhausting for your soul. Mm -hmm. Yet the true believer cannot lose hope. Mm -hmm. The true believer, we we cannot turn back on this journey if we have put our hands on the plow. If, If we desire to reach the heavenly kingdom, we cannot give up because the journey has all, all of a sudden turned up is difficult. Come on, come on. We cannot, we should not go back. Mm-hmm. So while we are on this journey, I believe that every true believer will require sustenance mm-hmm. in order to be able to make it to the finish line. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This sustenance, as you have heard me say before, is not a sustenance that can be provided by anything of this world. There is nothing that the world can give you 
that will sustain your soul. Mm -hmm. Without any sustenance, our soul, it can grow weak. And if our soul grows weak, it becomes much easier for us to lose hope. It becomes much easier for us not to reach the finish line. I desire to reach the finish line today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you desire to reach that finish line today as well. Here in first Kings, we are introduced to the prophet Elijah. And y'all know I love me some Elijah. (laughs) And in first Kings, we get to see a portion of his walk of faith. We get to see a portion of his journey, if you will. As we know, Elijah, he was a man who was very strong and he was very bold in his faith in the Lord. Elijah, we know that he boldly stood up to King Ahab and Jezebel and all those false prophets, those prophets of Baal. Mm -hmm. And he did this on behalf of the Lord and he did this on a few occasions. And, And because he did this in his walk of faith, because he did this on his journey, those people, they, they began to despise Elijah. They began to hate Elijah. They, they hated this adversary of theirs. This all at first began in the 17th chapter of first Kings where we see the Lord command sends Elijah there in the first verse to go before Ahab and to pronounce the great famine Mm -hmm. that lasted for three and a half years, according to Luke and James, and even in the 18th chapter of first Kings Mm -hmm. for Elijah. Scripture shows us that this famine Mm -hmm. was a moment in time where the Lord clearly supply Elijah's every need where the Lord clearly made a way for Elijah Mm -hmm. to be able to endure, to be able to make it through the famine on his journey. For a short period of time, we are told there in the 17th chapter of first Kings and the sixth verse that for a short period of time after the proclamation Elijah, he stayed by the brook of Cherif. Mm -hmm. And it was at this brook where the Lord sent ravens to Elijah to deliver meat and bread so that again, he could be able to survive so that he could be able to make it through the famine. Mm -hmm. Now, when the brook eventually dried up because of this famine, Elijah, we will notice here in scripture, he did not have to stress He did not have to worry. Mm -hmm. He did not have to do this about his physical needs. Mm -hmm. We see that, that his physical needs were cared for by the Lord. Mm -hmm. God, we will see, told Elijah to go to Zarephath where there was a widow who would be there that could provide shelter for him, that could provide food for him as well. So, so clearly here in this passage of scripture from the 17th chapter of first Kings, clearly here, the Lord was caring for and taking care of Elijah's every need. And so far we have seen him caring for and taking care of Elijah's physical needs. Now I wanted to make this point clear here to you first, because our physical needs are always a major concern for us, aren't they? They are such a major concern for us that they can cause us a great deal of stress, a great deal of worry that can trouble us in our soul. In actuality, the believer ought not ever stress or worry about our physical needs. Jesus has said to those that would choose to follow him, not to worry about what we will eat, not to worry about what we will drink, not to worry about what we will even wear because the Lord, our God cares for us. Mm -hmm. The Lord, our God will clothe us in the same manner in which he clothes the flowers of the field. So I tell you today, try not to ever lose hope Mm -hmm. 
because you feel that your physical needs are not being met by the Lord. Because I tell you today that God cares for your physical needs. When you don't think that you can physically make it, God shows you wrong each and every time. As food somehow ends up on your table, as clothes somehow end up on your back, Bills somehow, when you thought that they wouldn't be paid, they ended up being paid. Mm -hmm. And God has been doing this for a very long time for us. So why do we continue to stress and worry about these things? You are going to make it. Don't worry about that physically. Now, as we continue on here through Elijah's time after the proclamation of the famine there in the 17th chapter of 1 Kings, we'll see that he arrived at the widow's home. If you are looking at first Kings, I hope that you're looking now at the eighth through the 16th verse here. Mm -hmm. We'll see this widow was not in a good place on her journey due to the famine and due to the scarcity of things. This widow had lost all hope and we will see that she was waiting for death to come for her. Not only her, but for her son as well. See, when we find ourselves in a spiritual famine because of our trials, because of our tribulations, even because of our adversaries, our soul can reach its lowest point possible Mm -hmm. and is likely at its lowest point possible. Mm -hmm. These are those moments where we are spiritually exhausted and we are simply unable to bear anymore. You see, God, I believe that he reaches out to us in these times, but some of us, we end up losing our connection with him in these times in our soul. All right, all right. Because we lose our connection when our soul is in a spiritual famine here, We stop hearing the Lord's voice. We stop recognizing the signs of God trying to reach out to us. Mm -hmm. In his letter, James wrote, he said, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. He asked, is anyone cheerful? Let him sing Psalms. Mm -hmm. He then asked this question. And I want you to hear this question closely and clearly here. He asked, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church Mm -hmm. and let them pray over him, Mm -hmm. anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him, the sick one Mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. I want you to hear that today because one who is sick is not always sick physically. I tell you here that this widow was not in good health. Mm -hmm. She was not in good health spiritually. Mm -hmm. She was sick. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this was also affecting her mentally. I believe that this was affecting her emotionally. And yes, it may have been even affecting her physically as well for the time in which she was living in. Mm -hmm. But God did not desire for this widow to lose hope. He did not desire for her, in other words, to be sick. Mm -hmm. So the Lord needed to supply her need. Mm -hmm. The Lord needed for her to get well, if you will. God needed for her to be uplifted in her soul. Mm -hmm. And so to uplift her in her soul, we will see that God sent to her Elijah, a man who again was strong in the faith. When a word of encouragement needs to be supplied to our need Mm -hmm. to lift us up when we feel like we are starting to lose hope, Mm -hmm. when when we feel like we are spiritually exhausted and and when, when we may have lost our connection, when we cannot hear his voice. God will send to us a messenger. In other words, God will send to us an encouraging word to lift us up in somebody else who will come to us to give us that good word. Mm -hmm. 
we find here in the 12th verse that Elijah encouraged her to have faith. Elijah encouraged her to trust in the Lord when she doubted. She doubted that she did not have enough for them. Elijah, her son and herself to be able to make it through the famine. But, but with this encouragement that came from Elijah, thanks to God, over time, we'll see that this widow began to realize that they were going to make it. Yeah. She began to realize that they were blessed with more than enough to make it through that great famine. Oh, yeah. 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 This widow, we'll see in the 24th verse of that 17th chapter, mm -hmm. she became one who relied more and more on the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, and she said to Elijah, Elijah herself, that his word, God's word, she said, is the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, this was something that, that she learned herself from this encouraging word that, that came from Elijah. Mm -hmm. This encouraging word of God, it uplifted her in her soul. It gave a woman who had lost hope, it gave her hope to continue on her journey. And with this hope, she saw that she could make it through the famine. Mm -hmm. I tell you today that if you are in a spiritual famine, that you should not lose hope. All right. Do not lose hope. Amen. You can make it through. I'm giving you an encouraging word from the Lord today. Mm -hmm. God gave her exactly what she needed, and that was hope. God will give to you today exactly what you need to be able to make it on your journey. When times are tough, when things get difficult for you, when you feel like you are in a famine, when you feel like you are in a drought, God will make a way for you. God will give you the strength. God will give you the hope to be able to make it along the way. You see, there are a lot of times when we lose hope because we don't believe God has given us what we feel is enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because of this, we stress and we worry. Yeah. We get down on ourselves and not only do we get down on ourselves, we get down on the Lord as well. Mm -hmm. We lose hope. Yet we must have the faith to understand that the Lord always provides us more than enough. God, we must remember, is a liberal giver. So there is no need for us to ever lose hope in our soul because he is going to give our soul what it needs to be able to continue to push on forward on our journey. Yeah, yeah. At times, the soul needs an encouraging word from a familiar voice. Mm -hmm. But there are other times when that familiar voice is simply not enough to encourage us right. along the way. Right. Our trials, our tribulations and those adversaries, they can become too much for us. Mm -hmm. They can become so great that we feel it necessary for us to flee. Mm -hmm. For us to run away. For us to stop battling, for us to stop fighting, for us to stop walking that walk of faith, to give up. We give up hope. We lose it. Such a moment happened to Elijah in his walk of faith. In the 19th chapter of First Kings, we see that after the showdown and the victory at Mount Carmel, we see that Jezebel had put Elijah on notice. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the man of God who was bold and strong in his faith, we see that he was on the run for his life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Scripture shows us that Elijah, he found himself at a broom tree where he had sat down mm -hmm. and that picture at this broom tree that Elijah was looking out over the land, All right. maybe looking up at the sky, 
seeing the sun in the sky, seeing the clouds in the sky, and maybe wondering, how did I end up here? I picture a man who was at the end of his line. And we'll see in the fourth verse that Elijah said to the Lord, it is enough. Have you ever been at a point on your journey Mm -hmm. where you sat down and you just thought to yourself Mm -hmm. and you said to God, it is enough. Mm -hmm. I know some of you may have been maybe better than I am, but I have had moments where I have looked to the Lord and said, I don't know how I'm going to keep on going forward. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I can keep moving forward. That's where Elijah was. Mm -hmm. Elijah said to God, it is enough. Elijah was done. He was spiritually exhausted. Yes, sir. He had given up hope. Mm-hmm. It was gone. He had lost it. Mm-hmm. This man who was strong in the faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why had this man who was strong in the faith, why had he lost hope? Mm-hmm. I suppose for us to be able to answer this question, We should consider for ourselves today what could lead us to saying exactly what Elijah said there. What could lead to us losing hope at times on our journey when we feel like we can't go on any longer? Mm -hmm. I believe that we often lose hope when we are overtaxed. I believe that we often lose hope when we are overly burdened in our soul. When those trials and when those tribulations, when they have piled up on us so much, I believe that we can lose hope when they have become too much for us to handle, Mm -hmm. when they have become too much for us to bear. Mm -hmm. I believe we often lose hope when we feel things aren't going our way, Mm -hmm. when they aren't going as we plan for them to go, when they aren't going as we desire. It is in these moments that the believer can begin to think that God is not on their side. Mm -hmm. And this is a thought, this is a feeling that can cause the believer to feel like they are all alone on this journey. That they are all alone in this battle that is life. You see, I believe that in the end, all of us, we get where Elijah was coming from when he said it is enough. I believe that all of us have been there at one point in time, or if not multiple points in time in our life. You see, Elijah, he was a man who was overly worked. Elijah, he was a man who was overly stressed. He was a man who was overly burdened in his soul with all that he was dealing with and with all that he was going through. Mm-hmm. You see, for Elijah, the victory at Mount Carmel was supposed to be a crowning moment. Right. It was supposed to be a moment of great victory, yet it only turned into gloom and doom for him. Mm-hmm. So often does this happen for us in life. Mm-hmm. We, we have a, a crowning moment in our life mm-hmm. where we are up so high, but... Trial and tribulation comes knocking on the door. Our adversary comes up and say, hey, how things going for you today? Here I am. This was a moment in time where, again, Elijah felt all alone on his journey. He looked around and he didn't see any other believers. He looked around. He didn't even see any other prophets on uh, this journey. He felt like he had no help. He was alone and he was depressed in his soul under this broom tree. So Elijah was in need of a mighty uplifting hand here so that he could be able to endure and continue along on his journey. Instead of sending someone to Elijah, we find that the Lord personally stepped in here to supply Elijah's need. At the broom tree, we will see that the Lord put Elijah to sleep. 
And after sleeping for a while, we are told in the fifth and the sixth verse that an angel touched Elijah. This angel woke Elijah up and told him to eat. We'll see again that Elijah was put to sleep and I believe that he was put to sleep by the Lord there. See, I believe that Elijah needed some rest. And after a while, we are told that the angel of the Lord came back, woke him up. And we'll see that in the seventh verse that the angel told Elijah to eat. And while he was eating there, I believe that uh, the angel we will see there told Elijah that the journey is too great for you. This angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the journey that you are on is too great for you. Now, this angel of the Lord, I believe that this angel is the same one that fixed breakfast by the sea for the disciples at Galilee. See, after the resurrection of Christ, the disciples, they went out fishing mm -hmm. and Jesus visited them by the sea and made a breakfast for them. And Jesus, he encouraged them in the work that stood before them on their journey. They thought that being with Jesus and after Jesus' death and resurrection, they thought that that was the end. But their journey had only just begun. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus at that breakfast by the sea, he encouraged the disciples. Right. We find here that this angel of the Lord was essentially telling Elijah, your journey ain't over just yet. Mm -hmm. This journey is too great for you, but here I am to encourage you to keep you going forward on this journey. Mm -hmm. Now notice that when Elijah had finished eating, notice there that he was able to go in the strength of that food. We see there in my key verse today. Right. He was able to go in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights. We are told mm -hmm. yes, there was physical nourishment that was supplied here by the Lord. But I tell you that Elijah was now rejuvenated in his soul. All right, all right. Yeah. Where he was once exhausted, he was now lifted back up, given hope to continue to push on forward. Mm -hmm. See, God had to build Elijah's stamina back up just as he has to build our stamina back up at several points in time on our journey. Mm -hmm. Scripture proclaims that those who wait on the Lord will have their strength renewed by him, that they will mount up with wings like an eagle, All right. that they will run and not grow weary, mm -hmm. that they will walk and not faint. Mm -hmm. See, we should understand that our journey, as the angel has said to Elijah, our journey is too great for us to handle on our own. I don't know if you hear me here today. Mm -hmm. You see, if we try to tackle this journey by ourselves on our own, this journey will run us over. We will get run over by life and all that life throws at us, we will end up losing hope because of those trials, those tribulations, those adversaries that say hello at the most inopportune time that they possibly can. So in order for us to endure, we need all the help that we can get, don't we? We need all the help that we can get from God to supply our every need so that we do not lose hope. So that, in other words, we do not faint along the way. Elijah, he was very strong in faith. And we see that even he was not sufficient for the battle by himself that is life. When you feel like you are all alone, I want you to know that you are not alone when you are in fellowship with the Lord. 
I want you to understand today that the Lord will always be there to comfort you when you feel you are losing all hope on your journey. When we feel like things are not going our way, I want you to remember today that the Lord has set your way. God sets our way for us. He guides us. He directs us. And what we ought to do on this journey is we ought to trust in the direction that God has set for us. Again, we cannot lose heart today. We cannot lose hope today as that would be very tragic for us. It will be very tragic for one that believes in the Lord. Jesus, he taught the parable of the persistent widow in the 18th chapter of Luke's gospel. And he said there in the first verse in teaching that parable, he said that we should always pray not to lose heart. The very first thing that you should do when you feel like all hope is lost is turn to the Lord and pray to him. To the Galatians, Paul encouraged them not to grow weary in doing good. In other words, Paul encouraged them not to lose hope in doing good because in due season, Paul said that we will reap if we do not lose heart, if we do not lose hope. As I have shared with you in this series of sermons, there's a finish line that is awaiting us Mm -hmm. on this journey. There is an end destination that is awaiting us with a prize, with a reward for us. I desire for my finish line to be at the gates of heaven and not at the gates of hell. Where do you desire for your finish line to be? You see, there is a reward that is waiting that for me that I want to get. I want my gold medal. I want my gold crown, if you will. So in order for me to get that, I train myself to run this race. I train myself to to stay on path, to walk this walk of faith in a manner that I can to reach that finish line so that I can receive that reward from my Lord. So I encourage you today to do as David spoke of in the 37th Psalm and the third verse. David said in that 37th Psalm, he said that we should feed on the faithfulness of God. You see, when, when we feed on the faithfulness of the Lord, God will not only feed us our physical needs, In other words, he will not only supply our physical needs, but he will supply our spiritual needs as well. On three separate occasions here, Mm -hmm. I have shown you where the Lord was feeding Elijah. I don't want you to just think that God was feeding Elijah physically here. Mm -hmm. God was feeding Elijah. And then we saw even the widow. He was feeding them spiritually Mm -hmm. to give them hope when they felt like all hope was lost. Mm -hmm. We live in a world today that is always trying to tear our hope. Mm -hmm. That is always trying to rob us of our hope. We look at the gas prices, they be sky high. We look at grocery prices, they be sky high, don't they? Mm -hmm. Then bills, they pack on as well. And we begin to wonder again how we are going to make it. How can we continue to push forward? God says to us, don't you worry about that. Mm -hmm. I got you. I am going to feed you. I am going to personally take care of you in any way that I possibly can. Whether I have to send someone to you to say, stop doing what you're doing, keep on moving forward. Or if I have to personally step in, I am going to ensure that you make it that you reach the finish line. You see, when when, when God feeds us, God feeds us to the fool. You will remain filled with hope and you'll be able to endure all that life throws at you on your journey. 
So when we have those moments where we feel that we are losing hope, I tell you today, don't lose hope. Remain faithful to the one that is faithful to you. Remember that God is with you and that he will uplift you and that he will supply your every need so that you can endure and so that you can make it to the finish line that is at his heavenly gates. Amen. Amen. Amen.